Welcome. On this video, we're going to introduce the idea of logarithm functions. So let's get started. So let's start by just writing down what a logarithm function is. So this is an example of a logarithm function. So log of a of x. And let's try to understand what this means. So we have a log function, log, that's just short for logarithm. This little number that we do have here, it's called the base of the log. There is some restrictions about this number, and we're going to discuss them in a second. And what we have here in parentheses is the value that we're going to be evaluating the logarithm function of. So the way that we say this is log of x base a. Or we can also say that this is a logarithm of base a evaluated at x. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is that we can use logarithm functions to rewrite exponential functions is because this logarithm function, it is true if and only if we have this exponential, a, y, x. But what does this mean? Well, this means that if we have a logarithm function, we can rewrite it as an exponential. And we have an exponential, we can kind of think about it as if it was some kind of a log. Now, the relationship between them two is that exponentials and logarithms are inverse of each other. So we can say that the inverse functions are, the inverse functions of exponentials are logarithms. And where does this exponential come from? Well, if we come back to our log function, we see that if we if we let the, the base of the log be the base of an exponent and we raise it to what it's equal to, that will always be equivalent of what the log has been evaluated on. So a of y is equals to x. So you can you can see that there is some kind of a small triangular direction going on. So from a, if we raise it to the y, that's always going to be equivalent to what we have inside the log, which is x. And that's exactly what we do have here. So now we can, we can kind of have said that there are two important things between logarithm and exponentials. The first one is that we can kind of think that we can rewrite one as the other, and also that they are inverse of each other. But now, what exactly do we mean by this extra restrictions at the end here? For, for x to be greater than zero, for a to be greater than zero, and for a to be equivalent to one. And these restrictions are more than anything for the logarithm. So let's go back to our logarithm function. And I just took away the errors, but let's just go one by one. So x should be positive, or x cannot be less than zero. So what do we mean by that? Well, that means that the logarithm, so every time we have a logarithm, we cannot evaluate it by negative values. So every time we're going to be using the logarithm function, we cannot take the log of negative 10 or the log of negative 20, because what we're going to evaluate the logarithms, that value should always be positive. So that's the first restriction here. Now, the second restriction here, and let's just do that in orange, I guess. And let me just overwrite this color. So the second restriction, it talks about the base of the log. And what this is saying is that the base is never negative. So when we're looking at logarithm functions, there are two big restrictions that we always have to keep in mind is that we can never evaluate the log by a negative number and the base of the log, it's always a positive value. We will never see the logarithm base of negative 10 or even the log of base zero. And the last idea is that A can never be equals to one. And we're going to use some examples in a second to explain this farther in the video. But this is exactly what the logarithm is. The logarithm can be seen as the inverse of an exponential and we can rewrite them 
like this. So the log of base A evaluated at X, we can rewrite it just by kind of joining them in some kind of triangle motion. So A exponent Y is equal to X. And that's how we have this expression here. And when it comes to the logarithm, the base is never negative and we can never evaluate the logarithm by a negative number. So I guess by the restrictions, we, we have already discussed them. The first restriction is here, is that the base, I'm sorry, X, is that we can never evaluate the log by a negative number. Let me just give some example. This is what we cannot do. We cannot say, well, let me see, and let me take the log of 10 to the negative 10. So again, this is what we cannot have. And the second restriction that we discussed previously is that the base cannot be negative. Let me, let me just do some examples. Well, this is what we cannot do. We cannot take the log of negative nine evaluated by X. It just doesn't work out. So now that we have introduced the logarithm function and we have discussed both of those restrictions, let's actually see how this is applicable. So we'll start by answering a very fundamental question, which is how do we evaluate logarithm functions? So let's try to rewrite the following log functions, exponentials, and we're going to use the exponential form to solve for those log functions. So let's look at A. Our first task here is that we have a logarithm function, base two, and we want to evaluate it at a value of 32. So this is essentially what we're looking for. We're looking for log of base two evaluated at 32. So if we, we can just get a graphing calculator and perhaps just put this number down and then we're gonna get an output, but let's understand what the output is. Well, we know that we can solve logarithm functions if we rewrite them using exponentials. So what is the exponential equivalency of this logarithm function? Well, to rewrite an exponential, I'm gonna take on my base of the log and I'm gonna raise it to what it's equivalent to. And I'm gonna make this equal to the evaluation, which is exactly 32. So now we know that this both expressions, they kind of mean the same. So if we solve for this expression, we'll be solving for this y. So now let's look at the exponential function. And now we think, what value of y will make this a true statement? In other words, 2 to the what exponent is equivalent to 32. And notice that the value of y that will make this a true statement, it is 5. Because 2 to the fifth is equal to 32. So now we know that y is equivalent to five. So now if we know what the value of y is, we definitely know what the log of base two evaluated at 32. Well, that is equivalent to y, but we already know that that's five. So therefore we can say that the log of base two of 32, that's equivalent to just five. And again, what? What essentially what the logarithm is just a function. It is just, you can think about it as a machine that we place down a value and it gives you an output. That's pretty much what it is. It's just some kind of a machine that we place down. It's a machine who has a base of two. We plug in a 32 and then it gave us an output of five. And why did it give us an output of five? Because if we take a look at the log function and we rewrite it as an exponential, that's the value that will make the exponential equation a true statement. Now let's evaluate the other logarithm for B. Again, we want to get our log. So here our log has a base of three and we want to evaluate it at one. So essentially what we're saying is this, Y equals the log of base three evaluated at one. So what is the output? If we have the same machine, but now we put it as a base of three. If we evaluated one, what's the output? Well, we can use a graphing calculator and perhaps find that value, or let's try to rewrite this as an exponential and let's see what value makes it a true statement. So again, how do we write an exponential? We're gonna take the base of the log, which in this case is three, and now my exponent 
is what the log is equivalent to. And that's going to be equivalent to what we are evaluating, which in this case is one. And now we think, well, what value of y will make this a true statement? So three to the what exponent is equivalent to one. But notice that any exponent, if it's zero, your outcome is always one. So in this case, y is zero because three to the zero is equivalent to one. So now that we know what the y value is equivalent to, now we can write that the log of base three evaluated of one, well, that's equivalent to just zero. Let's just do one more. Let's just do one more. So we're, we're going to skip the, so let's go to C now. Same idea, here we have a log. Now we have a base of four, and now we want to evaluate it at two. So let's just write down what exactly are we looking for. We're looking for the log of base four evaluated at two. We don't know what that is, but let's try to rewrite this as an exponential. And the way to write as an exponential, we're going to take a look at the base of the log, and we're going to raise it to what is equivalent to, which is the y, and we know that it must be equivalent to what we're evaluating, which in this case is two. And now we think, well, four to the what exponent, it's equivalent to two. But notice that if we take the square root of four, that's essentially two. So therefore, y must be one half. Because remember that the square root of y, well, that's equivalent to y to the one half. There are equivalent. So now that we know that y is equivalent to one half, we can come back to our problem. And now we can say, well, I knew that the log of four evaluated at two is equivalent to y. And now I know that y is one half. So now I can say that the log of base four evaluated at two, well, that's equivalent to one half. And that's essentially what we're looking at. Now let's discuss some of the properties of logarithm functions, because it's not just an idea of just rewriting as an exponential and solving for the, for the value to properly evaluate the logarithm. This functions, the logarithm functions, they do come with certain properties. So let's discuss some of those properties. And the first property says that for any logarithm functions, it doesn't really matter what the base is, if the logarithm it's evaluated by the value of one, the output it's always going to be zero. So the logarithm evaluated of one, it's always zero. But why is that? Well, let's assume that we don't know that answer. Let's assume that we don't know what that answer is, which we we already know that it's zero. So if we rewrite this expression, the logarithm as an exponent, we're gonna get a. to the value that we're looking for, and that's equivalent to one. Well, let's think about this. It doesn't really matter what the A is. For any value, the only exponent that we can use here that will always give me an output of one, it's zero. Because whenever your exponent is zero, your output is one. So therefore, the logarithm, the value of one, it's always zero. Now, our second property is that the logarithm, if the base, which in this case is A, is equivalent to what we are evaluating, the output, it's always one. Well, why is that? Well, let's assume that we don't know that the answer is one. So we're gonna have, let's just try to rewrite this as an exponential. So we're gonna have A, and now my exponent is what we're looking for. And that's going to be equivalent to what we're evaluating, which is this a. Well, let's think about what value will make this true. a to the what exponent is equivalent to a. Well, anything is equivalent to itself if the exponent is 1. So therefore, the exponent here, it must be 1 in order for us to have this true statement. Notice that these properties of logarithms are just based on the exponentials. 
And the third property, or with our four, but the third property that we're going to show is that the, if the base of the log is equivalent to the base of the exponent, which in this case, the base of the log is A, and the base of this exponential expression is A as well, this will always be equivalent to just X. But why is that? Well, let's think about this for a second. Let's try to rewrite this logarithm function just in exponential. So we're going to have a and let's assume that we don't know the answer. So we, I'm just going to leave it as a space a to the what it's equivalent to a x. So what value can we place here in order for me to have the left is equal to the right? Well, the only value that makes sense there is x itself. So therefore, in any logarithm function, if the base of the log is equivalent to the base of the exponent, that is equivalent to x. Another way to think about this is, let me just erase this real quick here. Another way to think about this is, and again, I don't like to say it this way, but I have seen uh, some books address it this way. If the log of the base is equivalent to the base of the exponent, then the log and the base cancels out and what comes out is just the X. So that's another way of saying it. We can say that they cancel out. And example D, it's not that straightforward to show using exponentials. So we're just gonna write down the result. And the result is that let's assume that you have a base, which is A. And now the exponent, and let me try to rewrite this because perhaps it doesn't make a lot of sense right now. So it's A, and now I have an exponent. And now the exponent is an actual log function. So what is this equivalent to? Well, we're going to say that also they do cancel out and the result is also X. So these are four properties that we have to keep in mind whenever we are discussing logarithm functions. And the first property is that any logarithm evaluated at one, it's always zero. If the log of the base is equal to what is evaluated, it's equivalent to one. If we have a logarithm and the base of the log is equivalent to the base of the exponential, though that is equivalent to just X and the same goes for D. Now, one thing that we're not going to spend too much time on, but it's something to refresh from algebra two is the idea of a change of base formula. So when we talk about logs, one thing that I, for, I guess I forgot to mention at the beginning here is that the base of the log, or let me say that the standard base of logarithm functions is the value of 10. So if you only see the expression log of X, we're going to assume that there's a little 10 here. That's just the standard base of a log. And when we use our graphing calculator and we press the log button, it's going to, your calculator is going to think that the base is 10. So there are times when we do have certain problems where let's assume that you have a logarithm that is not base 10 and you want to write it as base 10. And for that, we have the change of base formula. And what the change of base formula is saying that if you have any logarithm that is not base 10, but you still want to write it as base 10, what you can do is take the log of what is on the top, which in this case, I'm going to say the evaluation, base 10, and divide it by the log of what was the base base 10. And you will see that these two expressions will give you the same output. But the advantage of even though this doesn't look as clean as it was originally stated, the advantage is that now they are base 10, the logarithms are base 10. So this is I'm not going to go too much into detail. Uh, but this is just to refresh you that there is something called the change of base formula. And now that we have discussed this four properties, let's just put them into use here. Because now we can solve logarithm functions. So let's try to solve for x real quick here using some of the properties that we have discussed previously. So let's looking at example A. 
On the left-hand side, we have log of base 2 of x, and on the right-hand side, we have log of base 2 of 3. Notice that on the left and on the right, they both have the same base, which is base 2. So whenever we have those situations, the logarithms will cancel out. Notice that the only way for the logarithms to cancel out is if they share the same base. If they don't have the same base, then we cannot do that. But since they, they both have the same base, we can just cancel them out. So the logarithms, they go away. And now we still have an x on the left and we have a 3 on the right. So we can state that x is equivalent to 3. For example, b, notice on the left-hand side, we have log where the base matches what has been evaluated. And notice that this is essentially what the second property is stating, that for any log, if the base matches what it's been evaluated, then it's equal to 1. And that's essentially the situation that we do have here on the left-hand side. So therefore, I know that the left-hand side is 1, and the right-hand side is still x. So therefore, x is equivalent to 1. Example C, notice that the base is 5 of the logarithm, and also the base of the exponent is 5. They match up. And according to uh, the third property for logarithm, they will cancel out, and what is remaining is just the exponent. So therefore, log of 5 cancels out with this 5, and the only thing that remains is this x. And the same idea goes for d. Notice that for d, let me just try to rewrite it. d is trying to say 7, which has an exponent of log of 7 of 14. And notice that this is essentially the last property that we discussed here. If the base of the exponential equals the base of the log, they cancel out, and what is remaining is just the evaluation, which in this case, this 7 is going to cancel with the log of 7, and what's remaining is just 14. And this concludes our lesson for the introduction of logarithm functions.